Howdy guys, welcome back to the Power Driven Diesel YouTube channel. Today we're talking about the Shardy. Now, the Shardy's been my personal daily for about 15 months now. But about nine months ago, we put a common rail in it, went up to the ATS Gauntlet Challenge and smacked down a thousand horsepower. Now, when... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's just sorry. straight. I was in, I'm the one that can keep character. <laughs> Okay guys, on a serious note, we broke the input on the shoddy, so we're going to throw the power driven input shaft in there and kind of see what what it can take and see how it fails. And while we're at it, we're going to show you guys kind of just what you have to do when you break an input shaft, go through, clean some stuff, go through the valve body, make sure no stuck valves, um, and just kind of get an idea of transmission health while we're at it, because like I say, it's seen a lot of abuse. So, follow along. <laughs> Okay guys, first thing you gotta do when you swap an input shaft after breaking it, your pump. So, because the input shaft goes through here, all the fragments go in your pump and you're gonna probably chew it up. As you can see with mine, um, it's not looking the best. It's pretty frozen in there. It's got a lot of scarring and stuff on it. But, so, we're gonna swap it out. If nothing else, the stator support broke. That's what's holding on to the input shaft. So, we're gonna grab a new pump and set it up to be put in. So first of all, we're gonna grease it all up, get, make sure those gear sets stay nice and greased before that oil comes in and it helps lube everything. We're also going to have to press a new seal in it and transfer some seals over, make sure the bushing's in and is staked in. So we're gonna start doing that. Okay, next up is the valve body. So the way the fluid flow goes through the transmission, it comes from the input shaft into the valve body. So any little pieces of debris come from your broken input shaft and go straight into your valve body and end up jamming valves and stuff. So it's super common that you have issues with the valve body. So we always go through them, make sure they're clean, make sure they're good. So that's what we're gonna start doing here. So we started tear down on this valve body here and well, this valve is stuck. And this is actually the valve that applies uh, the torque converter so um, that's where your input shaft fragments are going to go straight away so that's definitely part of the reason why we don't have lockup right now there we go continue on Thank you. 
So the valve body checks out, we made good pressure, seems to be working great. Let's go check out the clutches. So starting off, we got the overdrive clutches here. They look just fine. So we're gonna end up reusing those guys. Um, we got the forward clutch here, and these don't normally see much wear. They look, dude, those look fantastic. Those look basically brand new. Heck yes, I'm gonna reuse those. And then we got the direct clutches. Oh, those look those look basically brand new as well. And these are the same clutches that they've been in this thing for the last 8,000 miles. So <laughs> I'm not touching that. The second gear band is definitely getting a new one. Um, and that is kind of my fault there. I think that when I first set up the valve body, it was for a 12 valve. And I never actually went in and changed it. So it wasn't making enough pressure down low. I think it was slipping at low th throttle position. And but because the common rail was making a lot of torque. So. Anyway, so that is, that is that. We're gonna throw a new band in there, assemble this thing, and throw the power driven input in. Let's, let's do this. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? Okay guys, we got the transmission all together. We got that power driven diesel input in there. It's just a standard input. And we're gonna put this power torque triple disc in here. It is a stock stall, which is exactly what I had before. So I can really kind of compare how it feels in comparison. And I'm gonna say it again, these items are not rated for the 1100 horse that this thing's putting out. I think we're putting it right at like 850 to 900 foot pounds of torque and uh, 900 horsepower and 1800 foot pounds of torque. This truck has done, I think 2100 on our, on our dyno and I use every single bit of that every single day. So I do, I'm not, I don't think it's gonna last the full year, but if it can last the same nine months that the last one lasted, I think uh, it'll be a win. So let's, we're testing it. We're gonna see how this does.
I can do a Tuesday. I'm gonna gamble a boogie and sit hard. I'm gonna do the Tuesday.